Hello friends, welcome to your own channel, Relifted Cinema. Today I've come to provide some entertainment during this Christmas season with another exclusive recap. We're going to spend a few moments with a cool, old, scary movie named Monster, Humanoids from the Deep, from 1980. Genre, horror, sci-fi, directors, Barbara Peters and Jimmy T. Murakami. Writers, Frank Arnold, Martin B. Cohen, William Martin. IMDb, 5.7 of 10. Top cast, Doug McClure, Anne Turkle, Vic Morrow, Cindy Weintraub, Anthony Painter. Short plot. As a result of failed scientific experiments, terrifying mutations emerge. Creatures that are half man, half fish. They wreak havoc on a small fishing village by killing the men and assaulting the women. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video. If you liked this content, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on new videos. Support us and make sure to share your thoughts with me in the community tab and comments. Now, let's get back to the video. In the small town of Noyo by the Pacific Ocean, life is about to change. There's a big project, a salmon cannery. Many fishermen who catch fish for a living are worried. They think the cannery might hurt their jobs, but not everybody feels this way. Hank Slattery and some others think this cannery is a great thing. They believe it will make the town richer and their lives better. But Hank has a problem. He doesn't treat everyone fairly. He is unkind to people who are different, like Johnny Eagle. Johnny is also a fisherman. But he doesn't want the cannery. He likes being his own boss, fishing the waters like he always has. So, there's a struggle in Noyo. The townspeople must choose. Do they want the new cannery, which could bring wealth but also risk their way of life? Or will they stand with Johnny, believing in the old ways of fishing and freedom? The people of Noyo have big decisions to make, about money, fairness, and what the future of their town should look like. In a quiet fishing town something strange happens on a boat. Fishermen pull up a net with a scary creature inside. Everyone is shocked. Suddenly a young boy falls overboard. He disappears beneath the waves, something pulls him down. In the panic, a fisherman grabs a flare gun to help, but he trips. The flare hits the deck, which is wet with gas the boy spilled earlier. The boat catches fire. It explodes with a huge bang. All the fishermen die. Back on shore, a couple named Jim and Carol hear the explosion. They go see what happened. That night, something really sad happens. Their dog goes missing. The next day, they find their dog's body on the beach. It's not whole anymore. Jim and Carol don't know what to think. What's going on in their peaceful town? They're worried and afraid. Something dangerous might be out there. The subsequent day witnessed adolescence Jerry Potter, portrayed by Megan King, and Peggy Larson, played by Lynn Schiller, venturing to the seashore for a leisurely swim. An unexpected incident occurs when Jerry is suddenly submerged, leading Peggy to initially perceive it as jest only to be confronted with a tragic revelation on closer inspection. In the midst of her terror, Peggy is confronted by a menacing figure on the beach. As the night falls again upon the same location, another pair of teenagers engaged in an intimate setting inside a tent face a horrifying intrusion. The chaotic episode results in a pursuit onto the sands where one manages to escape the immediate danger, but her relief is short-lived as she encounters another threatening presence. In a small town by the sea, something scary is happening. Dogs are dying in a strange way. Everyone is upset and worried. One man, Hank, thinks Johnny Eagle, who lives in the town too, has killed his dog because Johnny's dog is the only one that's okay. Hank gets so mad he kills Johnny's dog. This leads to a fight at a party where Dr. Susan Drake is just meeting the town folks. She's here to study fish because a big company, Kanko, is planning to open a new fish cannery in town. Dr. Drake discovers something strange. The fish have been changing, becoming bigger and stranger, because of some chemicals Kanko was using. These chemicals were supposed to make salmon grow faster, but during a storm, the salmon swam out to sea and were eaten by bigger fish. Those fish then turned into dangerous creatures that look like fish but also like people, and they're now causing chaos in town. These mutated creatures are attacking people and causing a lot of fear. It looks like Kanko's experiments have caused a very big problem for the town of Noyo. 
At the thrilling point of the story, the creatures they call humanoids suddenly attack during the yearly salmon festival. It's chaos. They're hurting the men and attacking the women. This scary moment makes everyone forget their differences as they unite to fight back. The hero, Jim, quickly thinks of a risky solution. He teams up with Dr. Drake, and they take action. Together they drive a boat into the middle of the marina and start spilling gasoline and oil into the water. They're planning to set the water on fire to stop the creatures who are chasing them from the water. It seems to work, as the creatures that swim can't stand being in the burning water. And when they try to escape onto land, they start getting weak. They can't live for long out of their water home. Seeing this, the townspeople come together and fight back even harder. They use whatever they have, guns, clubs, torches, to defend their town and beat the humanoids. In the middle of all this, one of the townsfolk, Hank, is in a bad spot. A humanoid almost defeats him, but then Johnny Eagle, another brave resident, steps in to save him. The town works together, and in the end, they defeat the humanoids, making the town safe once more. At Jim's home, during the chaos, his wife Carol faces a scary moment when a humanoid breaks in. She fights back hard and manages to stop the creature with her own hands before it can hurt her. The day after the big fight at the festival, the town feels quiet again. The scary creatures are gone and people start fixing the damage. Jim and Carol find each other and share a hug, happy to be safe together. But the peace is broken when we see Dr. Drake in the hospital with Peggy. Peggy was hurt by the creatures, and now she looks like she's going to have a baby. Just as they think it's time for the baby to come, something scary happens. A creature like the ones from the festival comes out instead, and it's a shocking moment for everyone. The town's battle might be over, but this shocking surprise at the end tells us the fight might not be <laughs>